like worship our weapon right now. You don't even have to have any words. Say, oh, say. Worship is our weapon. Come on, believe it. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Quentin Tolbert and I'm so excited for this call. I've actually been waiting for this one for a while. This is my boy, Johnny. What's up, Johnny? What's up, Q? Can I call you Q? You can, of course, always. Q money. What's up, bro? What's Thanks up? Thanks for having me, man. No, I'm so happy. So yeah, this is my buddy, Jonathan White. I'm so excited to kind of have this conversation. Um, the next series for relationship goals. And this was a little bit untraditional because the service ad um, just occurred this past Sunday. There is it, there it is. Um, so for those of you who are just turning in for the first time, uh, Pastor Mike Todd is the pastor of a church um, at, called Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he's doing a series right now called Relationship Goals. Yo, we gotta go. And it's essentially how to build good relationships. Um, and I love it because it's not necessarily just romantic relationships. It's about relationships first with God and how that God relationship can spill over into like other relationships in our lives. And so for me, it's been a blessing. It's been helpful. And it's been like uncomfortable at times. He calls me out sometimes. I feel like he personally is attacking me sometimes, but sometimes we need to be attacked. So so yeah. what about you, John? How, how, do you, how have you been enjoying the, the series so far? I, I love it. I'm just excited to for where it's gonna go next. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. It's one of definitely one of his uh biggest um series with relationship goals. He did the first one, I think that was last year or maybe two years ago. Yeah. And then now this one, relationship goals reloaded. So I'm 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 all in, man. I'm tuned in. Exactly. Uh you're talking about it, dropping great videos. So that's great. And then um, our small group is going to expand on it as well. So I think it's great. Um, I love Michael Todd. Yeah, he's, love the Michael Todd. he's the man. He's Pastor the, Mike Todd. Pastor Mike Todd. He's the man. I, he's so relatable. And I love his sense of humor. Uh, he's a comedian slash pastor, I feel like. I mean, so he just makes yeah. it really, it's like easy to digest. So that's why he's, a, I think, he's a great pastor and, and great word that he always brings. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this past Sunday. Um, we were both, you and I were talking about this before we started filming. You and I were both um, ready to get like a traditional, regular sermon. Um, and can you break down what happened with the <laughs> service? Man, what happened is God took full control of the sermon. Um, I follow him on Instagram. So on Instagram, you know, he came out of his car. He has a nice car. He came out of his car, but he didn't have his voice. Usually he'll shout out, you know, oh, today's going to be great, amazing, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he did like a Siri voiceover on his phone and was explaining like how he lost his voice. So I'm like, oh, man, he lost his voice. So, um, but something, so then he comes out, you know, during the service and he starts talking. After worship, I'm well. I thought it was after worship. He comes out during worship. I'm thinking, okay, now we're tra we're transitioning to the sermon. He had his voice back. I'm like, oh, great, yeah, we're definitely getting a word. No, not the plan. God had something totally different. The spirit was high in Transformation Church. Spirit was high in my home. I had my friend Hobson. We were just worshiping, and I turned out the whole service. We were just deep in worship. Um, and praising God. So God had full control, changed the plans, did what he wanted to do um, in Transformation Church, and hopefully, or well, prayerfully, I, I know he did it throughout the nation. For sure. Like, I live by myself, and like, it was my entire home. My, my entire yeah. home. So it was so good. I love it because it was so unplanned. It's something that I wasn't, I, I think it's something that I didn't think I needed, but I needed that worship. So it was like about two hours of just full on worship. Two hours. <laughs> Two hours. Worship. More. Like, I haven't gone in like that in like a hot minute. And like my church, like we're known for like our worship. But like since the pandemic hit, I, most of us have been watching uh, churches online. We've been virtually watching church. And so it's kind of good just 
I'm like feeling that connection. Like, I know I definitely felt it. But one thing I really loved about the Transformation Church is that it really um, like shook everything up and it was not planned and not scheduled. And so I want to talk about that like in our lives. Have, have there been any times in your life where you think you're going to do something as planned and then God comes in, swoops in and says, nope, I'm changing up the plans. Has that ever happened to you? Of course. I think it goes back to uh, this, um, his second part in the series called Rip Your List. I think it goes back to that. Um, when I make my own list, or I think whether it's my marriage, I think uh, I'll talk about that. So my marriage, I think it's going to be, you know, I want to have a great marriage. I want my marriage to be perfect. I want this to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen, right? But when God looks at the list, even though I might feel he's he's on it and, you know, I want him to be a part of it, but if he's not the one really holding the list, if he's not the one that's really uh, um, making up the list and I'm going by what I'm being called to according to his purpose for me, it gets ripped. Yeah. And when that, how that looks is basically God turns everything around. So I'm thinking it's going to be this way and smooth transitions, no pain, no loss, no hurt. And we're going to get to the palace, right? But God steps in and transformation. I mean, changes all of that reason being is because my list probably was, it looks good, but none of that was going to get him glory. So everything on my list might've felt good and looked good, but God, it's like God steps back and says, yeah, but how is this going to glorify me? We need to switch some things around that. We need to yeah. take this off. Cause that's not like me. We need, you know what I mean? And these people are not going to be blessed by you going to on your list. I need you to go by my list so you can touch my people and so people can be healed by this story that i have lined out for you yeah. so i think um a lot of times in my life he has done that and will continue to do that and i'm just going to continue to trust and put him first so that's why this series is so great to me because it's it's really uh helping me to do that and just surrender and say yes to whatever his will and his list is for me that's so good and i love how he brought up bringing up your list because if we go back to like I think the second episode um he interviewed or he was talking about his wife Natalie somebody asked her what was on her list quote unquote and like some of the things on her list was like a guy who was like maybe Hispanic with green eyes and I was yeah, like, yeah. God is the opposite of that and so sometimes we focus on what I gained from this is that we focus on sometimes things that are so superficial and sometimes things that don't make a big difference in the long run because I'll be completely honest I was that guy who had a superficial list like mm -hmm. my dream girl was probably like a like a milk chocolate almond girl who's like skinny thick and a big butt. Like that's Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like all <laughs> we all make good lists, you know. Yeah, and I, that's I don't think about I, it. I even knew I was making a list that makes sense. I think I feel like mm -hmm. I would go to like the same type of girls and. I know I was making a list, and, and in the end, it was all superficial, but you have to look at that person's heart. Like, is this person like a god thing person? Can this person uh, be the mother of my children? Can this person pray for me? Can this person war um, in prayer for me? Things like that. Things that are actually matter, not just like the physical looks, because like looks fade. Things like that, they come and they yeah. go. You can't like focus on the physical. And so that's one of the big things that I learned from Rip Up Your List. Yeah, man. Kim, uh, Kim talked about it yesterday because we were, you were apart. We were just throwing out songs that we listened to. Shout out to, to Kim. Kim. Shout Kim out to Kimberly Charles. After, um, at, I think it was the, it wasn't this past Sunday, but it was the Sunday before. Yeah, Realist Part 2. Bro, after that, I had to put on that Shekinah Glory. And that's <laughs> when I did it. Facts. And put uh, that yes song, and I just my wife was sitting on the couch, and I was just trying to hide, like in the pantry, just breaking down, man. Just that was, it was crazy. I make a list of the Chicago Glories. For those of you who don't know, Chicago Glory is like a like a musical group, um, and they have a song called Yes, and it is um, it will have you in your feelings for real. I make a list of this after this interview now, for real. It's that good. Yeah. It's that. Good. But 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 I love it. So it, it keeps the the keeps it going. One of the big things that I really like is that through the worship, I feel like there were some like intentional things that they were praying for throughout the worship service. And so one of the things that what Pastor Charles from their service was praying about was for generational curses. 
I'm probably about halfway through, he brought it out and he said, God had placed things on our heart to pray for people who had generational curses. Like how prevalent do you think that is in our community? Generational curses and like, how do you think people can break those? Uh, that's a good question. So with generational curses, yes, I think that's something that's uh, real deep in our community, especially um, because a lot of times, like Mike Todd said, so, some of those things happen because we didn't put our list aside. Yeah. And that's how that starts. And so I'm glad they did pray on that because um, those things are so embedded in our spirit sometimes. And it's going to take, um, it's going to take, to to be healed is going to take speaking out, right? Talking to someone else, seeking help. But first and foremost, it's going to take a, a, a surrender um, to God. It's going to take, you know, stepping out of, stepping out of yourself or looking at yourself and saying it stops here with me like this is something that i really need to get help on because i don't want this passed down and these you know just trying to break the chains just trying to break the chains and and, and that's something that um everybody has to take a look and see same thing for me like this is one reason why i really like pastor mike todd because for me I was I was addicted to pornography as well, like he always says. But that was something that had a big like stronghold on me. And I knew I didn't want to get into a marriage, you know, and have that kind of um, wickedness going on. And so I even though but with my own strength, I tried over and over again to break that. Um, I, I tried to block out things. And, but I, the big the thing is, I tried to do it by myself. So once I really, uh, really just confessed and just had a revelation with God about what I was doing, even though he knew the whole time, yeah. but I got to a point where, look, I need to break this. So I had, there was things that I had to do to get out of that. If it was giving my wife all my passwords, if it was deleting these apps and blocking this content and uh, doing this devotion and talking to this person, I had to do all of that to get that out of my system and break that, um, break that, that curse. That's very important. You have to like guard your eyes. That's like the biggest thing that popped in my head when you're talking about that. You have to like guard your eyes. Cause I think where your eyes go is where your mind goes and where your mind goes is like where your legs go. So you want to, especially like as men, especially as like, as black men, I feel like we have to like work extra hard to like put up a guard. So especially when you're married to put up a guard to like protect your family, protect your wife, protect your mind. So you don't, fall into any type of craziness you don't fall into anything that's uh, not of god if that makes sense yeah definitely have to yeah. and that's something I, I, tr I try to practice day in day out every day every day like when you're trying to break get rid of these generational curses or whatever it is whatever stronghold or addiction whatever it is it's a daily process like it's not oh i haven't done something for two one month two months three months I'm free. Like the minute you think that you're free and you don't need to go back to God for that is when the devil can, the devil is a trickster. So he can use whatever, you know, sneaks or um, his little tricky ways to get that right back um, caught by your eyes. And then from there, like you said, go into your mind and start thinking those negative thoughts and all that kind of stuff. So they like daily, I have to make sure I'm devoted to God, and I remind myself um, everything I do is for, for God's glory. So I'm not going to look at certain things. I have to stay committed to that so that I can stay free from those uh, from yeah. those chains. That's a blessing. I love that. I love how you're so open and so candid about it all. Okay, you provide, like, specific, uh, like, physical things that you could do to, like, prevent that. Sometimes, like, we can be so churchy in church if that makes it like churchy that we don't have like any practical applications. So that's like really good practical advice. Yeah, we like to use the word delivered a lot, which is yeah. great. Um, it's good to be delivered, but mighty specific. Yeah. yeah, and we have to they, like we have to keep putting it into practice. Yeah, you especially know. if you somebody like me, like I'm a young single guy. Um and it bro, it's tough out here. It's hard out here for a pimp, okay? <laughs> it's good having like that practical advice to kind of um flee from sin there's a bible verse that says something like to the fact that god will always like provide you like a way to flee he'll always provide a way to um 
kind of get you out of stuff. So even, I'm looking at all the times that I had temptation around me, and there's always a way to get out. There's always a way out. Always, it's just, like, man, do I really? Sometimes, like to be honest, in this word, <laughs> prayer really comes into mind because then it's like, do I really want to get out of this? Sometimes right. we do it in like no need to, or like two separate things. So exactly, like two two things that you have to keep praying about, keep um, fasting about, and have like a support group around you. So. In the midst of all the craziness with COVID-19, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the jobless rate at like 15%, in the midst of all the sickness and craziness around us, we still say worship is our wealthful. Worship is our weapon, which I think is pretty powerful. It takes a, I think it takes a special person to like say something like that, worship is our weapon, in like a crazy time like this. this because it's easy to say it when you're on the mountaintop and when things are going well, but um. Mm-hmm when things are like dark and bleak and like the world's in a financial crisis is it takes a special person to say worship is a weapon. So yeah, that's, that's, that's one of those things. You gotta have some faith to say something like that. Sure. For sure. You gotta believe something about God. I think it goes back to what, what, if, when you're in that, when you have such a deep relationship with God, when you see a, um, somebody worshiping, that's a reflection of the intimacy that they have with God. If someone is not really, and I can't speak for everybody because everybody worships different, but for the most part, if somebody's not really uh, crazy about worship or they don't take all that, you know, saying stuff like that, the intimacy is is is, is not there. And when the intimacy is there, that means God has you you've been walking with God and God has been with you, and yeah. so He's took you through things and He's already done things in your life. So when you get to a point where there's more uh, uh, tragedies happening or there's a, c- a current crisis, you go back to who God is, the core of who God is, and, w- and the Bible says all everything, who, what he is. So when you're in that intimacy and you have that relationship, you can shout out, worship is my weapon because I know God has fought battles for me before, and I'm going to use this to, to do the same thing with what's going on right now. Maybe I have the answer to this one. How is the book? So Michael Todd just released a book called Relationship Goals Reloaded. And I haven't picked up the book yet. It's on my, my to-do list. I need to do that before before June. Our small group is doing um, kind of like a Bible plan on a Bible study on it. So how have you enjoyed the book so far? Can I be honest? Yeah. Have you started it? Yeah. I'm on uh, chapter, I think, chapter eight or nine. I'm oh. on uh, chapter eight. You're like in it then. Yeah. I'm in it. But look, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. The book is great. It's given me a lot of tools that I can use, right? It's, it's, I'm, it's, but the books are really good when you read them and it's a mirror and it's, you see yourself in the story. Yep. Or you see yourself like what you need to do, what you're really looking at. Oh, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to start working on. This is what I need to put into practice. This is who I want to be. And that's what the book does. It really reveals, and he has a, he, he does a great job illustrating um, what it looks like to have God at the forefront of our relationships and everything, you know, going to him first and creating the list that he wants. And But this is where I want to be honest. I'm so thankful that I'm not single right now. It's not a it's not a hit on anybody that's single. But when you read that book, that stuff really is gonna take a strong relationship with God. And we can do it because the same power that God lifted up Jesus, we have in us. So you can do it. I'm not trying to um I'm not trying to like scare anybody. Yeah. But it has yeah, great tools point. to do it too. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying I'm thankful that because when I was, I'm young, guys. I'm probably the youngest guy he's interviewed. But before I was married, my how, single life, how old am I? Yeah. 24. You were not, oh yeah, you are the, my buddy Brooks is 25. So yeah, you got him about one year. You're just one I year. Just turned 20, I just turned 24 in March. He will be on your years. Hmm? You're well beyond your years. Yeah. But when I was single, you know, everything that he's helping us put into practice, I was so far off. Yeah. So it would have took a lot for me to do that, if I'm being honest. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm not in that stage. And I, 
I, I wish I could go back actually and change things and do what he's, you know, do what God has called us to do and live a single life, how he's called us to live, which chapter four is really good because it's, it's about um, singleness and, and dating. So, but yeah, when I was single, totally different story. And I wish I would have did what he did, what he said in that book. So I, so I didn't have to go through what I dealt with now. But yeah, great book, guys. Great book. Go get it. I love that. Um, I love that. Now, now I'm about to go buy the book now. Yeah, it's, it's a great book. I can't lie. I'm just, it's so raw. Yeah. It's so raw and uncut. And I love it. That's good. That's good. How was, um, like, how was your faith prepared you for marriage? Well, first of all, before you got married, were you like as strong in the faith as you are now? Or has it been a gradual process into that? It was gradual, but I was a heavy uh, backslider, bro. My, my, my dad was a, my dad is a pastor. Um, but even before he became a pastor, because he um, became pastor after um, the late great pastor, Reverend Arthur, Dr. T. Jones passed away. So he passed the baton on, um, rest in peace to him. He's missed. But he passed the baton on to my dad. But even before he became a pastor, I was kind of out there. And I had my moments, you know, where I always had a relationship with God. But if I'm honest with you, I kind of said, man, I'll be okay. You know, I'll go back to him another day, pretty much. Yeah. You know, let me let me live my life. I'm always in church. I don't want to do this. I want to have fun. So uh, I was a rebel. I was a rebel. Uh, just a, like anything that you think I wouldn't be doing, I was doing I'll just say that. So what was your question? I'm sorry. What was my question? Um, you, said, how has, you said something how has about... How prepared you for marriage? How has my faith prepared me for marriage? Prepared you for marriage, yeah. Um, I'm, I have to give most of the credit to my parents because I'm blessed. Um, the, the, the childhood that I had and the, the parents that I had, their marriage, the model that I had, really showed me, even if I wasn't in the word, it showed me how marriage is supposed to be done. So that they instilled that into me for examples, not just words that you read on a paper, but I had a legit example. Yeah. So um, that's what kind of helped me with my marriage and my faith, of course, because the more I read the word and the more I had a relationship with God, I knew I knew right from wrong, cliche, but I knew it's up to me. I'm not like, basically it's not gonna always be, or it might never be my wife to come and apologize. It's gonna be me. And that takes a lot. So it really helped, like we went through rough patches and God showed me how I need to sacrifice and lead by example. That's so good. I love that. Mm -hmm. For us, when I say us, I mean like single guys, like the, one of the like the the motives to kind of get into relationship goals is first to get a relationship with God, get that centered, and then pursue a, a, a young lady. That's like the ultimate goal. And so, since you've already arrived there, what advice would you give somebody like me and other single guys who are watching this about kind of pursuing the right woman and then like keeping that godly relationship? Man, you want advice from me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, so you want to... the world, I love asking married people um, about um, like about marriage. I love asking like younger married people, and then I love asking like older married people who've been in there for a while. Because for the most part, you you'll get like similar but different answers. Um, like one of my buddies who I just interviewed last week, which you guys go back and look at the very last video I just posted. His name is Bruce, so he's been married for um, I think about three years. They're like a young couple. Um, and so he's really giving advice about how they met in college and how they were backsliding, but they still love God and how they both like use each other to kind of strengthen each other. And when they end up strengthening each other, they end up getting closer to God. By getting closer to God, they end up getting closer to each other. So it's kind of like a, almost like a triangle effect. And so I just love asking many people about their take because essentially like, you've like almost reached the pinnacle, I'll say, of, of, of life while we're trying to get there. We're striving to get there, okay? I'm striving to get, I might, here's the thing, when you're married, I'm striving too. Like y'all have, you guys have goals to get married, but I have goals for my marriage to be right. 
You know what I mean? I have I have goals for um, God to take full control of my marriage because a lot of times we try we still try to do stuff uh, within our own power. So, like Todd, Michael Todd says, enjoy being single. Uh, marriage is beautiful. I love it. I never would regret it. Awesome, but enjoy being single. So, what the advice I would have is if you're starting a date. You know, and you're looking for uh, a woman. Um, I can't. I don't know the game or how to get her. Um, but what I can say is, when you guys start dating, right, and you're tr you're thinking about, is this the one? Yeah, I really like this girl. I'm feeling her. Da 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 da. Um, you get to a point where, at some point, secrets have to be uncovered. Like you have to be straight up about everything. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is get rid of all your expectations. So I would say come forward about your your faith, number one, if she's, you know, if you don't find her in the church or wherever. Um, come forward about your faith and the kind of man you were and the kind of man you're trying to be now. Well, that's good. That's what I would do. That's real good. Yeah, because I because they need to they need to hear that so they can you don't nobody wants to waste time right now. Yeah, you don't want to waste your time. Real good. You know, so you want to throw it out there to try to, hey, this is me. This is Take this is all it. of me. This Take it or leave it. Or leave them. And for me, when I was dating and uh, even while I was with her, I was hiding parts of me, you know, and so she didn't find out me until way later on and that led to a lot of trouble and hurt so i think the best thing is to um while you're single work on your your character like get the book it's going to tell you everything I'm, I'm trying to say yeah and then when you start dating put it all out there i love that that's good advice mm -hmm. the best I advice is chapter four intentional dating what do i need to be doing tell me tell me what i'm doing wrong no i'm kidding Hopefully I'm doing it right. You're doing it right, bro. We'll find out after I read chapter four. After I get the book and read chapter four, we'll do a part chapter two. Chapter four and five is, uh, matter of fact, four, five, one, two, three, four, all the chapters are great. I, just, it's a, I can't <laughs> even skip those. All of them. Read everything. That's funny. That's funny. And then um, just like one of the final questions, what have you learned about yourself from marriage? Like what has marriage taught you about yourself? What? Man, marriage is a mirror. I thought I was a good, I'm a good person. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, um, do you always think that you're right? Like, even though you, you might, I'm humble, and I know I'm not right about everything, but it's some things that you really think you're right about that you're not right about. And even with that being said, even when you are right, you, marriage teaches you um, how to submit, how to uh, be humble, how to be transparent. Like it really teaches you everything. It really teaches you everything. And the biggest thing for me that it taught me is I can't do it. I can't do this without God. Yeah. Period. That's really like, good. I can't, I, I can't, I can't stay married and endure the, uh, the good times or the hard times without God. So I think that's the number one lesson to me. I can't do marriage without God. And that's what this book is about, honestly. Great. We can't do it without God. I'm excited. I need to leave the, um, I'll leave the link of the book uh, in the description, in the bio, so you guys can pick it up. First, I need to pick it up, and then I'll leave the link. Because I need to mm -hmm. first. Because let me just say this. I said it, it teaches you how to be humble and all that, but really, when God is in the midst of your marriage, uh your wife is is not teaching you but he is he's showing you yourself he's showing you hey this is what you need to get rid of yeah but you're not going to do it without me wow and this is what you need to practice but you're not going to do it without me and this is who you need to be and this is how you have to love but you can't do it without me so that's what that's what marriage shows me all the time so it's great when you get when you are dating or when you're married for you and your partner to do devotion and pray and all of the above together. That's good. I love this. I, the entire series, I haven't read the book, so I can't speak to the book, but the series 
to me, it seems like it's not for people who are just in relationships because you have to focus on the main relationship, which is God. And then from that relationship, everything else spills over. And so to me, no matter what stage of life you're in, whether you're single or divorced or about to be divorced or wish you were divorced or single, um, I feel like this uh, relationship goal series is so relevant for, for, for everyone. I think it's something that we can all learn. There's like so many nuggets throughout that we can kind of gain and take from uh, Pastor Mike Todd and like, apply it to our lives. And it's pretty, pretty amazing, pretty awesome. Yeah, pretty good. It's good stuff. What else you got? Any anything in closing? Any final any thoughts on either the book or the relationship series or relationship goals? The the first version. Any other closing remarks? Uh, I'll just close and 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 uh, say this that you guys should tune into the series and tune into what Quentin's doing every week because he's doing a great job. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited for this uh, series. I got the book. I'm reading the book, but um, I'm I'm excited to hear the word. He's anointed. This is an anointed pastor, so I I love hearing what he has to say to the nation. So um, the last thing I would say is if if you're tuned into the series, share it with somebody who you think needs to hear it. That's that's what I would do. Um, yeah. Share it to the people you love and your friends and people who are far from Christ. Because a lot of people, um, people I know have gotten the book and tuned into this series and haven't went to church in 10 plus years. Wow. And actually wow. like some of them don't even have a relationship with God yet. Can you um, plug your YouTube station uh, and your YouTube channel? He's an amazing channel. I was just talking about this. Before. I have a decent channel. It's called elevation station. Great. Yeah. You guys <laughs> elevation station. Uh, check it out. We just have transparent conversations on many different things and trying to elevate and do life um, through elevation. So uh, that's what that's about. Tune in. It's a podcast. It's on uh, Apple Podcasts. It's here broadcast on YouTube. So yeah, check us out and uh, subscribe to the channel. Perfect. I can send an assessment, not because we're just friends. I, it's pretty good. It's really deep. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we will have another video next week. Thank you guys for rocking with me over the past couple of weeks. Then as long as relationship series lasts, I'll keep doing commentary interviews with it. And um, let me go, know what you guys think about it. If you want to see Jonathan back, let me know. Comment down below. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I'll see you next time. All right, see you guys later. Bye. See you guys.